saw Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power still the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven my praise belongs to you forever this is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I testified By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Come together sons and daughters Bought with blood and washed in water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started Our God will finish what He started This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story, I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come, oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come, oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done, no. Greater things are still to come, oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not testimony from death to life cause grace we wrote my story I testified by Jesus, Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony oh I'm alive this is my testimony from death to life cause grace we wrote my story I testified by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. count on one thing the same God who never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes i will bless your name yes i will 
sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Welcome to Mosaic at Home. Here's a question for you today. What resolutions made your list for 2023? A few months ago, Statista Global Consumer conducted a survey of about 400 adults asking them what their news resolutions were for 2023. Check these out and see if any of yours made the list. 52% said to exercise more. Another 50% said to eat healthier. 40% said to lose weight. 39% said to save more money. 37% said to spend time with family and friends. Another 20% of people said to spend less time on social media this year. And 19% said to reduce stress on the job and to reduce spending on living expenses. I really love these resolutions because ultimately, if we can get closer to achieving any of them or all of them this year, well, we should become better versions of ourselves. And when we become better versions of ourselves, I think everybody wins. So here's to 2023 and to us becoming better versions of ourselves. However, have you ever stopped to think about what the real versions of ourselves might really be? Let me read just a few verses that speak about our human nature, the way we're naturally wired on the inside. Psalm 51, five says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in my sin my mother conceived me. Iniquity meaning immoral or grossly unfair behavior. According to Romans 3.10 and verse 23, as it is written, there is none righteous, not even one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Then in Jeremiah 17.9 we read, the heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Matthew 15.19 says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. Ephesians 2.3 says, Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of the flesh, 
indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. So what this could mean is that a better version of ourselves is simply less evil, less wicked, less proud, less deceitful, less malicious, less scheming, less sinful, but it's all still there. If we circle back to the list of resolutions that I mentioned earlier, again, they're, they're good things to be working towards this year, but I don't know if any of those things can or will address my natural human condition. I don't think that any of those New Year's resolutions will truly resolve the real condition of my heart. Did you know that the heart is considered the wellspring of life? That's such a powerful thing to understand, which is probably why Solomon, the wisest teacher to have ever lived, penned the following words. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Another version says the following. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. This past year, some of us allowed our hearts to grow cold, to become bitter, to harbor unforgiveness, to become callous, to be filled with worry and anxiety, to become jealous, to become careless, to grow distant, uh, to become filled with fear, uh, to focus on regret, to lose hope, to stop dreaming, even to cease believing that greater days are still to come. For whatever the reason, we allowed our hearts to move in that particular direction. But this year, 2023, it does not have to be that way again. We can make the choice to guard our hearts differently, knowing that there's a better way to walk through this new year. Let's unpack this for just a minute. I want you to imagine your heart as the master control room of your life, as the center of everything that you are, everything you do, and every single choice that you make. You see, the heart is the center of one's will, and it represents the whole inner being of man, who he really is. In the verses leading to our Proverbs 4.23 passage, Solomon also says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. You see, true life is not just something that you have. It's not static or superficial. Rather, life wells up as one finds truth, accepts it, embraces it, and then allows it to flow out. You know, Jesus uh, might have been alluding to this verse in Matthew 12 when he said, For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus went on to say that a good man brings forth good things out of the good stored up in him, and an evil man brings the evil things out of the evil stored up in him. So here's a warning and a reminder for this new year. Guard your heart from being taken over by the enemy. You see, there's an enemy after your heart, Satan, and he's playing for keeps. I mean, he'll do all he can to kill, steal, destroy, divide, and accuse. Think about it this way. If an enemy is able to take over and poison the well of an opposing city, then life dies off and the city falls. It's no different with our hearts. If the enemy takes over your heart and poisons it, then your life is set for despair, destruction, and ultimately death. So here comes the big question. How then do we guard our hearts? Allow me to offer a simple response. We guard our hearts by moving them closer to the heart of Jesus. Psalm 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It is the word of God that we must use to guard our hearts. It is the teachings of Jesus that are our fortress, our defense, and our firm foundation. Jesus says in John 7, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. On another occasion, Jesus said to a woman at a well that he who comes to him to drink will never thirst again. He who comes to Jesus to drink will have a spring of water welling up to eternal life. That's John 4. That's why, above all else, guard your heart. Move your heart closer to Jesus this year. But Pastor Lucas, I mean, that's going to be a difficult thing for me to do this year for whatever the reasons might be. I want you to remember this. If God gives us a command, he will enable us to carry out that command. So don't make excuses. If God says, guard your heart, then know that he can and will empower us to make it happen. It's not optional and it, it's not a suggestion. 
It's a command that you and I are fully responsible for. And because we know ourselves best, it's up to you and it's up to me to determine what specific vulnerabilities and areas of our lives need to be guarded. There are some basic things, spiritual practices, disciplines, we can all do this year to have a closer relationship with God. Let me give you five important ones. Number one, make it a consistent habit of confessing your sin to God. If sin is the barrier, then confession removes that barrier. When we confess our sins to God, He promises to forgive us. And it's forgiveness that restores the relationship that's been strained by sin. Number two, make it a consistent habit of listening to God through His Word. Rather than just chasing after supernatural experiences to hear God's voice, remember that we have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, which is the Word of God, the Bible. It is through God-breathed scripture that we hear God's voice and are thoroughly equipped for every good work. Number three, make it a consistent habit of speaking to God through prayer. Prayer is learning to talk to God as we would talk to someone we love and love spending time with. But prayer also has to be so much more than asking God for things that we need or want. Our prayers have also got to be more about Him and who He is. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Number four, make it a consistent habit of getting planted in church for regular worship. Don't just attend when you feel like it or when it's convenient. Get planted in a church this year. My challenge for you is that this year you would be more of a contributor and less of a consumer, more participating and less spectating. You feel me, bro? All right. Number five, make it a consistent habit of living a life of obedience before God. Listen to some of the central teaching of Jesus. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's pretty straightforward. James 4 tells us that as we submit ourselves to God through obedience, resist the devil and draw near to God, he will draw near to us. Can you imagine God moving closer to us? And then Paul tells us in Romans 12 that our obedience is our living sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. There's a line from an old hymn I used to sing growing up, trust and obey, there is no better way. Here's my personal New Year's resolution. Maybe we can make it ours all together. This year, I choose to move closer to Jesus so that I can be more like Him. And as I move closer and closer to Him this year, guess what? I'm going to learn how to take care of this temple that His Spirit dwells in. I'm gonna learn how to become a better steward of what he's entrusted to me. I'm gonna learn how to really love, care for, and serve the most important people in my life. And I'm gonna to learn to trust my Heavenly Father more and more with the things of life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I think we can all use way less of the old and way more of the new life in Christ. God is inviting you. And he's inviting me. He's inviting all of us to sit at his table this year. He's extending an invitation to us to move closer to him, to recline and dine at his table and in his presence. But listen, we don't have forever to accept this invitation. This invitation is good while we still have breath. Once you pass on from this life, if you haven't accepted his invitation, you will spend eternity separated from God and will not have a place at his table. So what's it going to be for you this brand new year? Will you choose to move closer to Jesus? Will you choose to move towards Him today while you still have breath inside of you? It's God's desire that we will all sit at His table and that all will find salvation in Him. This year, choose to move closer to Jesus. Would you allow me to pray with you at this time? Father, thank you for meeting us here today, here right now. Help us to move our hearts closer to you so that we can be more like you. Father, I pray for everyone that is watching today. Bless them, their families, Lord, and be with us as we step into a brand new year. Help us to know you, to find freedom, to discover our purpose so that we can make a difference with the one lifetime that we get. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you for spending some time with us today. Have a blessed week. 
As we move into our time of giving, I first want to thank everyone that has partnered with Mosaic financially. If you would like to partner with us this year, you can give your tither offering at mosaicchurchsa.com forward slash giving. You can also text any amount to 84321. If it's your first time giving through text, the online system will guide you through a few prompts and then you'll be all set for future giving. If you like giving through apps, be sure to find us on Cash App or Venmo. Just search for Mosaic Church. SA. Thank you for joining us online today. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep the conversation going. We hope you have a great week and we will see you next Sunday online.